Hello and welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a mum of three from the UK. Today's video, uh, I'm just gonna get straight into it because I am melting. Uh, I'm gonna get straight into it and it is things, as the title suggests, things I wish I knew before I started home educating. Now, I've got 10 on my list and I'm gonna do as many as I can in a short video today uh, because I'm filming this the afternoon I'm meant to upload it. So, without further ado, let's get on. Number one. So this one's a big f big one for me and it's really, um, it's really, really common. I've watched a few videos that were similar to this before I did it and this seems to be the big one, which is creating school at home is impossible and doesn't work. Um, this is a really big one for me because I still now, after five years of home educating, try and replicate this occasionally. Um, and we do have some things that we do do that is school-like. So for example, um, I have three children who I home educate all at the same time. Um, Charles would be um, going into year five, Bessie would be going into year three, and Albert would be starting reception this year if they were all in school. So, and I'm doing it all at the same time, it's just me and I, they talk over me. They talk over me, they talk over each other, they really, really struggle with that. The other two is, because of part, is partly because of their autism, they just don't understand the communicational um, to and fro in the same way that a neurotypical child would. So one thing I ask them to do when we're, when we're, I mean, I ask them to do it all the time, is if I'm talking to somebody and they really want to talk to me, I get them to stand in front of me and put your hand up because then I know that you're waiting to talk to me. So we do that when we're sitting down and we're doing a group a group project or a learning opportunity they have to put their hands up if they want to speak to me because otherwise i get ma, 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 three different directions and i just get overwhelmed so we do do that they don't have to ask to get food or drink or go to the toilet or anything like that um and we don't have set um school times you know homeschool times or anything like that we don't have set things like that so um we don't, we don't do that. And we did try, I tried to have a timetable and I tried to keep a schedule that was, you know, we do this on this day at this time. And the only thing that we do to a schedule is English, maths and science. Um, and in that sense of we, we do them in a day. Like some, we aim to do them in the morning, but if like tomorrow we have a play date in the morning, so we'll do our schoolwork in the afternoon. Um, and that's fine it's not um we'll just switch around when they have like play time when they're just gonna go play um i'll say oh okay you guys can play this morning if then maybe they're not in the mood i said we'll play in the morning and we're good but we need to do our home school our home learning after lunch we call it learning time so um we'll do our learning time after lunch and they're like yeah okay so i just i just can't stress enough don't try and make it like school number two some people are just never going to understand and I remember um, somebody, I won't mention their name because it would probably really embarrass them, um, at, who, uh, when I, um, when Charles was first, I'm gonna sneeze, no I'm not. When Charles was first school age, they said, I understand why you're doing it. Like I understand your reasoning behind it, but I don't understand why you would ever want to. Like why you would just not put him in school and like just get on with it. Um, and I was like, well, what, they weren't a parent at the time. They are now. I don't think their opinion would have changed. But um, yeah, and, and there's other people in our lives that just don't get it. They think that we made a bad choice. Um, they ha used to, until recently, would go, well, what if they want to do this? Or well, what if they want to be in this club? Or what if they want to do that? And because apparently school gives them more opportunities and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and some people are just never going to get it. Some people are always going to go, no school today at you and some people are always going to um yeah say say stupid things um so the th and you just have to ignore it you just have to ignore it so number three um the th the third thing i did not know before um i started home educating that i wish i did was that i would find my tribe um as as lots of people say i would find my community the people who really get me who get my experience who who get the journey that i'm on with my children because they're doing it too um I've made some amazing friends through my children, um, through him educating my children that I wouldn't have made in the same way. Um, I wouldn't have made these friends because, sorry, <sighs> because they would be home educating. If I sent my kids to school, then I would have missed out on them. 
and um, they're really really special people so I would not have got them in my lives um, and that's a really big thing for me is when you meet the people who just get you and they get where you're coming from it's yeah it's really special number four uh, this is for parenting too like I feel like this should also be on the list of things I wish I'd known before I had three kids um, which is all the plans and ideas I had at the very start would go flying out the window um, so I had planned oh we will do this and he'll be and he will be reading by this time and she'll be reading by this time and and, and blah, 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 blah. none of it happened none of it happened on my time scale the time scale that I thought it would happen on what I'd planned to happen on and it still doesn't happen now like I have a plan and the plan is just like a plot um, if you get the friends reference you know it's, it's kind of a plot um, I I don't follow it so much it's it's guidelines like the pirate code more like guidelines anyway um, it yeah it just it gives me like a framework of what we roughly should be doing but um, so number five uh, the, the other the fifth thing that I wish I'd known before I started home educating is that I would need more time for self-care to prevent burnout because they are with me all the time I don't get a break in the middle of the day except Mondays today is my only day that I get um, and I get at the moment oh my goodness Hmm. during term time school term time I get um five hours alone now because Albert goes to um forest preschool five to, uh, five nine till two and then Charles and Bessie are at the older older forest school ten till three thirty so I get like that ten till two time so four hours not five hours um where I'm by myself and I like that today I had lunch with a friend which was really cool um and and I you know I can run errands and and stuff like that and that is self-care for me but you know I came home and I cleaned the lounge and and I wish I wanted to do that was something I really wanted to do because I wanted to mop the floor it just makes me feel happy so um yeah and I would need to make sure that instead of just having a very quick shower that I made time to have a bath because that makes me feel better and that I took time to paint my nails because that makes me feel better and, and go for walks and all of that sort of thing. I had to plan that into my day to make sure there were things happening that were for me to refresh me, to fill my cup, whatever you want to do it, uh, rejuvenate me um, to make sure that I was being not fulfilled because being their mum fulfills me, that's vocational motherhood. Um, but I needed to take care of myself and learning to take care of myself um, in a way that doesn't make me feel selfish has been really hard. So. At number six, term times, term times and the length of the school year would be completely different to school and to other, other home educators. Now, how many people still work on a September is when we start new things? I know there are lots of people um, in the homeschooling community in the US and in the home, edu home educated community in the UK that um, still do things on a September as the beginning of the year timetable. Now, we follow the wheel of the year, so our new year is the 1st of November. So I like to have, in my head, I like to have all of the all of the level stuff wrapped up by sorry I'm so tired <laughs> wrapped up by the 31st of October I like to have everything wrapped up by Samhain because then we can just like even before Samhain like a few days maybe like a few weeks before Samhain so we can just concentrate on getting ready for the biggest holiday of the wheel of the year and um, just getting really excited about it planning the food doing the crafts um, decorating the house carving pumpkins all of that sort of thing um decorating our ancestor tree all of those lovely things that we do at Samhain um yeah it's it's really important to me to finish then but if I don't if we don't then that's fine like I'm not I don't stress about it but our term time looks different to the other things other thing is that we take a scheduled break regardless of what's happening um from when the schools break up for the Christmas holidays around then 
um, all the way through until after Charles's birthday, which is at the beginning of January. And um, all of three children have birthdays in January. Um, my grandmother's birthday was also in January and also the anniversary of her death will now be in January as well. As well as the anniversary of my granddad's death, which was her, um, her husband at one point. So um, it's a difficult month, January now, because it's a mixture of happy and sad and um, those of you who know we're going through the adoption process at the moment and likely that that will come to an end if everything goes well that will come to an end with panel um in january as well so <laughs> january is going to be a really really busy month we're going to take off um probably six weeks um through december and january and have our like I was saying to the kids like you don't get a summer holiday like the school kids do but you have a winter holiday where we take all of that time off um instead and and we but we work we do our homeschool through um through the year instead like through the summer instead uh, mainly because we don't really go anywhere in the summer because everything's just too freaking hot and there's too many people uh so number seven is um days off and weeks off are okay like recently um i was feeling really worn down i was feeling really tired and i just didn't have the energy to do things and the kids were feeling the same we were just all a bit like oh and i was like you know what we're gonna have two weeks off i just i just i just need some time i want to get the house sorted i was trying to do some decluttering i wanted to do some deep cleaning um and the kids just needed a break even though we're year-round homeschoolers and we don't do loads of stuff we do what we need to do um Me. and then what we want to do um we just needed a break when we just just only did what we want to do so yeah we took two weeks off and that was lush it was amazing um and just saying you know what today we had planned to do this and this and then just saying stuff it we're not going to do it we're going to just go into the woods for the day or we're just going to go to the park or what or we're going to go see our see the grandparents or whatever like you just you can just write off a day we call them mental health days or we call them pants days because when Charles was little he if he needed a, a mental health day of just chilling out he would just sit in his pants and snuggle up in a fluffy blanket or in a onesie in just his pants underneath and we used to call them pants days are you having are you gonna have a pants day today yeah I'm gonna have a pants day today which he just stayed in his pants all day um he doesn't do that anymore now he's older he puts clothes on but yeah Bessie has pants days because she's still like she, she still hates clothes I think I'm gonna get all 10 done. Let's do it, let's push through. Number eight, nature study would become super important. I would have never have thought that. Not because I'm not into nature, because I am, as you know from the videos and stuff, but um, I would never have felt like it would be a crucial part of our homeschooling your life, our curriculum, um, but it is. Like just going out, looking at the book, looking at our nature book that we have and, um, and just reading from a book that was written in the 1800s about nature um it's really important and i never realized i would think it was so important so that's another one at number nine our schedule would change with the seasons now again five years ago we weren't in the place that we are now when it comes to um following the wheel of the year we were get we were just kind of at the very beginning of that journey um as we were with home educating i'm so sorry I'm not even editing out yawns anymore. I just can't believe. I just you just have to accept that I'm permanently tired. I am an exhausted pigeon, all the time. I'm not an early bird or a night owl. Exhausted pigeon. Um, so our seasons change. As I said, we take a big six weeks off in December and January, um, and but we don't take time off as much time off in the summer, and our um, how much we do, we're less productive in the summer. We tend to just drag everything out a little bit longer um but we you know our schedule our schedule will change because we go to the horses we can go to the horses later in the summer than we would um in the winter so we wouldn't go to the horses at five o'clock in the winter with the children because it'll be pitch black pretty much um and it, it just it's not fun um, whereas we can go at five o'clock in the summer and it's still beautiful sunshine for another couple of hours and still warm and stuff so our, our schedule will go around what the time is um how much daylight we have and what the horses need at that time um because of because of you know how much daylight we have at our paddocks um and the horses what time we go and see them changes with the season so then what time we have 
for doing home education changes with the seasons as well because the horses have to be kind of at a big part of the schedule um otherwise phil has to go in the pitch black whatever time of year it is if we don't get if we don't put that into our day so um yeah our, our schedule changes with the season i feel like i should do a day in a life with spring summer autumn winter because it changes so much like for example in the winter i won't walk the dog first thing in the morning i walk the dog in the middle of the day with the children um whereas in the summer i will walk her first thing in the morning before phil goes to work um so she's out she has her walk before the pavement gets too hot um whereas in the winter i can't see anything like eight o'clock in the morning so i wouldn't um take her for a walk then i don't like going out in the dark um by myself so i would probably walk her um with the children it later on like later on um and then if it's raining she the dog doesn't like going out in the rain so we just wouldn't walk her that day um so the final point and that's giving us 15 minute video which is okay um every year would be completely different i just thought it would be this is we will use these books we'll use this curriculum and it'll just continue like this all the time but every year has been completely different every year of this five-year journey has been completely insane because different things have happened to um to us in each one um charles was of legal school age in 2016 um he would have gone to school september 2016 and um that first week of what you know home of when he was reception um he we had a wedding to go to and he was wearing this lovely little kilt and it was really adorable and then i was and i was heavily pregnant with um with his baby brother with albert so um you know he didn't do so much stuff and um and yeah so you know it slowly evolved and changed in the last five years for us um i'll go into that in a different video if you're interested so we can kind of talk about what we used and what we did in each kind of you know all the way through um but um but yeah so everything's changed it's all been different thank you so much for joining me for this video um uh, if you love home education content please like and subscribe it's great uh, you know i love every time i get a new subscriber i do a happy dance and every time i look at the video and i see likes it makes me super happy so keep doing it makes me you keep me going through the week especially on a monday um join us if you're interested in the adoption content join us on wednesday because i'll be posting another vlog um about that and then friday i have no idea what's going to happen on friday but there'll be a video i can't remember what it is um i think it's probably going to be um a craft video or something like that so we'll see thank you so much and i will see you on wednesday bye